Welcome to Part 8 of the Macintosh MC2105 Restoration Series. In Parts 1 through 7, we electronically restored and fixed the amplifier. If you missed those episodes, you may want to go back and check them out. In this episode, we're going to test the amplifier's output power, frequency response, total harmonic distortion, signal-to-noise ratio, intermodulation distortion, square wave response, and check for high-frequency oscillations. At the end, we'll compare the amp's specified performance to its actual measured performance and score the result. Before we begin, let's review how the tests are done. Recently, I made a fairly heavy investment in not just new equipment, but in taking the time to learn the skills and techniques required for me to do this type of testing and share my results with you. If you're interested in not just restoring vintage equipment, but also testing their performance and want to see more, please let me know in the comments. The power, frequency response, total harmonic distortion, signal-to-noise ratio, and intermodulation distortion tests are done using Spectra Plus SC test software. To drive a DAC 200 digital to analog module, which feeds test signals into the amp, the amp is connected to a Sencor PA81 power amplifier analyzer, which provides a dummy load and metering. Testing without a load will give inaccurate results and can be harmful to the amplifier. If you use speakers as the load, you'll have to endure listening to loud and unpleasant test tones, which can be harmful to your ears and speakers. So instead, we'll use the dummy load to simulate speakers. The PA81 can provide 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32 ohm loads. All tests were done at 8 ohms. In addition to the dummy load, the speaker outputs from the amp are also fed back to the DAC 200 and sent to the software for analysis. The square wave test is done using a signal generator to feed a signal to the amp. The amp is connected to the Sencor PA81 for dummy load and metering. The speaker outputs from the amp are fed to an oscilloscope for analysis. The high frequency oscillation test is done using the Spectra Plus and DAC signal generator to feed a sweep signal to the amp. The amp is connected to the Sencor PA81 dummy load and the speaker outputs from the amp are fed to an HP spectrum analyzer for analysis. Let's begin with our output power test. An amp's output is measured in watts, and this test tells us the maximum continuous watts our amplifier can produce before clipping. Clipping is when a clean sine wave at the input begins to turn into a square wave at the output from distortion. The MC2105 is rated to produce 105 continuous watts per channel with both channels driven. Here you can see a 1 kHz signal is fed to the amp and the left gain is being turned up. Now the right gain is increased. When the output voltage is 29 volts RMS per channel, power output will be 105 watts per channel. This is calculated by squaring the voltage and dividing by the load, which is 8 ohms. Note that the DAC 200 can only handle 10 volts and a 10 to 1 voltage divider was necessary to safely connect it to the amp. So 29 volts will appear as 2.9 volts in the display. You can see that the amp easily produces 112 watts per channel before any clipping is seen on the sine wave shown on the left. This doesn't mean, however, that the amp can produce 112 watts per channel without distortion. Over 105 watts per channel, distortion does go over the rated 0.25%, but it's difficult to see that using just the scope display. Power tests using just a scope to monitor the sine wave don't tell the full picture. More tests are necessary to validate that the amp can produce the rated watts at the rated specs. So let's continue to our next test, which is frequency response. A frequency response test confirms that an audio component is providing a flat response and is amplifying all the frequencies that it's supposed to. If the frequency output is exactly the same as the input, frequency response is said to be flat. Any divergence from flat is measured and stated as plus or minus in decibels. The MC2105 is rated to produce plus 0 decibels to minus 0.3 decibels from 5 Hz to 70 kHz. Here you can see a 0 Hz to 20 kHz sweep is being fed into the amp, and the red trace shows the response for both channels. 
At 105 watts per channel, the amp is almost perfectly flat from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. The software is unable to test the full rated frequencies of the amp, but the test covers all the audible frequencies, which is more than sufficient. So now we know the amp's output is flat, but let's do a total harmonic distortion plus noise versus frequency test to see how much harmonic distortion and noise is present at each frequency. Harmonic distortion is the result of new frequencies being created when a signal is amplified and appear at multiples of the original or fundamental frequency. Here you can see a 1 kHz signal is creating harmonics at 2, 3, 4 and 5 kHz. Harmonics must be kept to a minimum and the MC2105 is rated to produce less than 0.25% total harmonic distortion at full power. Our test begins with a 20 Hz to 20 kHz sweep signal being fed into the amp's input. The software analyzes the amp's output and displays the results. Total harmonic distortion and noise are between 0.014 to 0.13%. Our total harmonic distortion test told us the level of harmonics when one signal is input, but can we push this further? With an intermodulation distortion test, we test harmonics with not just one signal, but two. Typically, this is done with a low frequency and a high frequency at a 4 to 1 amplitude ratio. Our test will be done with a 60 Hz and 7 kHz tone, with the 7 kHz tone at minus 10 dB. At full power, intermodulation distortion is below 0.9%. On the left and right, you can see the 60 Hz and 7 kHz peaks, and between them, the peaks of the intermodulation harmonics. So far, everything looks great, but just how noisy is our amp? Let's now do a signal-to-noise ratio test, which tells us how loud the noise is compared to the signal. Macintosh doesn't actually give a signal-to-noise ratio for the MC2105, but instead states that when the amplifier is driven below full output, hum and noise should be 90 dB. To your ears, this means the music will sound 512 times louder than the noise created by the amp, completely drowning it out. Our signal-to-noise ratio test is more stringent than Macintosh's and accounts for the total of all noise, including harmonics. At 1 kHz and a 1 watt output, signal to noise is about 64 dB. To your ears, that means the music will sound about 85 times louder than the noise created by the amp. The 60 and 120 Hz hum from the power supply are each about 80 dB, so music will sound 256 times as loud. And the individual harmonics are about 70 dB, and music will sound about 128 times as loud. A square wave test can be one of the most revealing of all. It won't give you specific numbers, but instead a good visual indication of how well an amp is performing. Ideally, an amp square wave output will look like the one shown here. A shape like this, though, indicates poor low frequency response. A shape like this, poor high frequency response. This shape indicates a poor slew rate, which is how quickly the amp responds to changes in level. And ringing like this indicates oscillation or poor damping. Damping is the ability of an amp to control unwanted speaker movements. Here you can see the square wave output of the amp at 50 watts per channel. The square waves are ideal and no issues are detected. Finally, let's check for parasitic oscillations. These can sometimes occur when an amp's output feeds back to the input through stray capacitance or inductance due to poor circuit design or other factors. The oscillations can be so high in frequency that you don't actually hear them, but secretly they're wasting your amp's power and sending potentially harmful output to your speakers. You may remember from part three of this series that I removed two ceramic caps from the input board that someone had installed to quote, reduce high frequency megahertz oscillations. I believe this was done as part of other modifications made to the amp to drive LWE speakers, which use negative feedback. All those mods were removed, so let's check to make sure there are no oscillations. Here you can see the spectrum display showing the 60 watt output of both channels from 20 kHz to 4 MHz. A 20 Hz to 20 kHz sweep signal is being fed to the inputs to see if any of the frequencies cause a high frequency output. No high frequency output is detected.
That wraps up the testing. Let's take a look at the scorecard. As we saw, the amp is performing well and passed all tests, except for signal to noise ratio, which at 64 dB isn't as good as the amp's 90 dB rating. But remember, Macintosh doesn't actually give a signal to noise ratio and instead says hum and noise will be about 90 dB. By that measure, our amp comes in at about 80 dB. Still very good, but not quite as good as specified, so I'm scoring this as fair. That wraps up part 8 of the MC2105 restoration series. Stay tuned for part 9, which will most likely be the last in this series, where we'll replace the bulbs, install a new glass panel, pan locks, and a new wood cabinet. To stay updated, subscribe and click the bell. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.